<laughs> Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. Stop fucking thinking that you need your woman to like align with you completely. Because you know who's gonna you know who's gonna align with you completely? A man. A, a man with Aspergers. I don't usually post pictures of my kids online, but they're infants and you can barely see them, so you know it's it's fine. But a YouTuber named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone, tweeted, showing off the F trophies for clout. So the babies are trophies that I'm showing off. It's perhaps not a surprise that a picture of a proud father would be so upsetting to the sort of man who clearly never had one. As mighty armies clash in a struggle for total domination... Not completely correct, but who cares? Hey, Mish, good to see you, man. Oh, damn, he came flying. Hello, the everybody. It's the yeah. first time you're on my channel, I believe. I think so, yes. A baby. Yeah. It's been too long. Mish yes, I'm blessing it. I'm blessing it with my airplanes. <laughs> you're blessing us with your <laughs> presence. Good to see you, sir. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Post Zero, the Rule Zero after show, where yesterday we talked about the soft landing for men, and it had to do with this little video that went uploaded by a man who was apparently in his 40s after 26 years of marriage. Now, this is going to get uncomfortable, but you guys need to watch it because I watched it. So here it says, what 26 years of marriage looks like when they say they don't love you anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't care about you. <laughs> we don't care about you. Yeah, I don't know what this is, Red Hawk. For some odd reason, when I type in StreamYards, the chat, it shows twice. But so that guy got completely blindsided, apparently, after 26 years of marriage. And he felt the need to post it online. How in the world did a 47-year-old man came to the conclusion of him posting his sadness about the marriage the divorce online would get him anywhere. Gentlemen, your takes. <sighs> Sigh. <laughs> Doc, I get it. I said it already before to you guys, not on a stream at all, because I was going to cover this if none of us did, but I get it to a degree. 26 years of your entire life. That's almost as long as I want to say three quarters of my life right now. That's a long time. But after realizing that I think he did a video afterwards, I think it was a follow-up video I heard where he, um, did he thank everybody or whatever who was, you know, commenting and giving him support and everything. I thought, okay, he did do it for attention, sadly. Um, cause I was thinking I wanted to empathize and kind of understand and say, this is like I said in a post on Twitter is exactly what, you know, men's spaces are for are to provide understanding and to, you know, help you, you know, get back on track, get back to getting with chicks, having dates, everything like that. But, uh, <laughs> I think I was wrong and I can admit to that, <laughs> um, <laughs> After finding that out, I went, okay, never mind, forget this guy. <laughs> because now we've gotten to the point where guys are acting like girls, where they want to go online and they think that anybody that sees them crying is going to go, oh, I feel sorry for you. Let me provide you some, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I think to a degree, he probably hopes that some girl out there will see him swoop in and save him and say, I'll date you because I feel so bad for you because that's what girls get from guys. I'll be nice to you when your when your wife isn't twenty six years. Yes, this is what not having any options does to a man. Yep, hmm. uh, it it shouldn't matter if it's twenty five years, ten years, fifty years. If you're a man with options, it will never matter. Like this guy, he had he had zero options. Hmm. Yeah, this is um, 
if ever we were to describe, you know, Rolo's concept of uh, zeroing out, just show like this video, you know, because it's essentially what it is, you yeah. know, and this guy, you know, like you guys were talking about on uh, Rule Zero yesterday, everyone has just been programmed in this day and age, in this world, that dudes just need to be super open and super emotional and everything like this and act exactly like women. And everyone lies to them and gives them the expectations that they are going to be treated the same way as a woman would be if they're emotional in such a way. It's like, just open up with your feelings, just be kinder and all these kinds of things. And you'll see every single woman on, you know, the internet responding to this is saying, Oh, this is such a good thing. We need to support men, but not a single one of those chicks is going to go suck that guy's dick. So oh, you're, funny. You should bring that up because you just shared something in the private chat. So let's bring that up real quick. I, I do have an example that will make this simple after Jack finishes sharing your screen yeah so red yeah, hat just posted this yeah so cat cat's a cat's a good friend of mine uh extremely right-wing uh individual here um you know and she's she's got some interesting takes on a lot of things but uh right here this is the example of why like women just simply cannot be in charge uh, of things like this uh we live in <laughs> two completely different worlds and i don't know if you guys saw uh nuke had an absolute banger uh the other day on um twitter there was like one of these stupid like female war room dating coach uh that was bitching about like android phones or iphones or something like that oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. And, nuke's response, that one. and nuke's response to it was uh fellas if you've been on one date with one girl at any time in the world uh, you are more qualified to talk on this topic than any female dating coach, and he's 100% correct. <laughs> that. Oh, it's a shame Nuke could be here today. He's on holiday. He's on mm -hmm. vacation. He was visiting his parents. Mm, yeah. But he will be back next week. Let's see. So yeah, He's enjoying his time. Yeah, man, as he should. As he oh, should. Yeah. Like what Kat is saying here, I know people will mock this guy for crying on the internet because kicking people when they are down is apparently what all the cool kids are doing these days. No, that's not what we're doing, Kat. But I actually think this can be really valuable for women to see, to understand that men have feelings. And I have something that will like completely reverse this, that men have feelings too. We're all just people trying to make it through the challenge of life after all. She Funny you should too. say this, Kat, because I have an example of another guy opening up. And let's see. Where is it? 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 This is from an account you blocked, which I am not surprised about that I actually blocked her. But here's an example of a guy who opened up. Ba, 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 ba. Here we go. This is Jonah Hill's boundary setting. Now, we'll get into that real quick later. But this is a guy expressing his needs and emotions and wants. Plain and simple, if you need surfing with men, boundarylessness, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places, and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful, I am not the right partner for you. And how does this get reciprocated by females online? <sighs> This is manipulative, abusive bullshit. Sh blah, blah, blah. What a tiny little man. They always go for size, right? Like when a woman says size doesn't matter, why do they bring up that first thing when they're angry? Honestly, <sighs> if, if I could give the example that, you know, I will, I will dumb it down. Let's say you're at the job. You're working a job. Yeah. Uh, you barely have any skills and they let you go you basically are worth nothing nobody's gonna hire you but if you're a man with you know so many talents so much experience and you choose to stay at that job and you're getting offers left and right better offers you have more power it's as simple as that even jonah the way he typed the guy's setting boundaries but he did it in the wrong way that's like that's what i believe yeah in. Like, that was gonna be my take. Yeah. the jumbotron rule just applies dude don't don't type that shit out tell her don't exactly write yeah. it to her but like e even even in the way that he told her like he's he's putting his list of demands which I respect, like the guy has boundaries and he's looking, but you've, you've approached a surfer who posts, you know, pictures of her in a bikini. What did you expect, man? Mm -hmm. You know, like, 
Come on. I, you want to make your wife out of work. When I saw this going around, I wanted to get an answer to the question as to how long uh, they were together for. Uh, because if they've been together for you know a significant period of time and now he's just bringing this up, that says way more about him than it does about her. Um, you know, but yeah, you're hundred percent right. Uh, Mish, uh, the guy is totally in his right to have boundaries. He just went about doing it in one of the cringiest ways possible. And it's no wonder that it got blown up all over the internet and it got shared and everything like this. Cause you know, in my humble opinion, I don't even think it was that cringe because what he states, I think is perfectly normal for a man. If you want commitment, it is. but he should have told her instead of texted it her. Yes. Now that my. she's that she's abusing the fact that he texted it. I mean, that's just the c word. Like we're not thirty minutes in yet, so I can't say it yet. I kind of <laughs> want to keep this monetized, but that's just a dick move. I think at least, even though it was probably the wrong way to go about it, now if now that she's coming forward about this, I looked it up. They dated from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two, so only about a year from what it looks like. And with that said, now we're in 2023 and she's now talking about this coming forward. And I imagine had he said anything to her directly verbally, like we say that she, he should have, she would have gone forward and said, Oh, he was abusive to me. And he told me all these things and told me, no, told me it would have almost been Amber Heard 2.0 where you have, you know, she said, he said thing. And she is going to be the one that, Everybody's going to believe in Jonah Hill got himself covered by writing it out as much as it was a little too much, quite detailed. It was like he could have just said, this, this is, what is a the contract. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's the contract done. But um, instead, she probably you know, dropped this because like, he upgraded. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah my and, question, does he have a new chick? Yeah. Governor, can you look that up? How this um, chick looked and how his new chick looks? Pull that shit yeah, up, Jamie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> it was like waiting for a whole year just to come out of it. That sounds a bit, you well, know, this like br- it's this a bit brings eventful. Up a, this brings up mm-hmm. a good point where what I notice is that a lot of guys come with this too late where they've already committed. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, but I don't want to be with this girl. Where it's like, guys, what healthy boundaries are is, as we say, like uh, the relationship is a woman's job. Mm-hmm. You bring up, as soon as she comes with it, like, I don't date girls who, de- who do X, Y, and Z. I mean, I mm-hmm. love hanging out with you, but if you expect commitment from me, I don't date girls who do X, Y, and Z. And then the bull is in her court. Like, mm-hmm. I have made my will known. I have made my expectations known and now it's up to you you want it you adapt you don't want it you do what you do but the only thing we're doing is just seeing each other and nothing more yeah yep medium is the message man like 101 stuff you know it's it's hard to say what jonah hill's new girlfriend looks like some pictures she looks pretty pleasant the others she looks like a blocky minecraft character so i don't know well (laughs) kind of like square and give give us the most pleasant ones like give us the old one and give us the new one which one was the one where they had the same suit on oh i don't know uh oh wait here we go i found that exact picture as we're talking about you (laughs) Oh, God. <laughs> here we so are judging other men's they, women they kind of look similar almost this is weird this back and forth though yeah that's the old one so the old one let me see if i can um i'll send that to you i'll send you the links hold on yeah you can share the screen too by the way can i okay yeah, let me um do 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 let me do 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 I don't play around with this enough if you can't tell. Shitty movie. It's uh-huh. been a box office bomb. <laughs> well, uh, wait, you mean like uh, the, the, okay. the last Indiana Jones one, the Raiders of the Last Crusade? That was a great film. That's <laughs> the last yeah. Indiana Jones, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, what Shia LaBeouf movie? Uh, exactly. Who's that? There we Let's go. See. Okay. Can we share it? No waifus? Yeah. Okay, no waifus. No, no waifus, no. So that's the ex-girlfriend there, um, oh, the where they're wearing the same suits, like you were saying. Yeah. And then let's see if I go stop screen. Let me present to you. Da, 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 Here we da, are da. objectifying women. Oh, I know. So <laughs> here's the to... other one. She's a wood. In the more th- this right here is the more. Oh yeah. So you look there, and she looks okay, but then you look at like, click that right there. Like Ugh. this picture. <sighs> 
Uh, it's hard because, yeah, yeah right know. there. It's, mm-mm. Like, is this the newest one? Right here. That's the new one. He <laughs> lost weight. Yeah. He yeah, he really did. Weight. Yeah, which is good on him for sure. Yeah. Oh, dude. That, but, that explains a lot. She she looks worse than the first one, I think, right? Yeah. Mm. To, which to, one? Yeah. There's better the women will, will be vengeful if you fuck down, but oh, they, yeah. they will not say anything if you fuck up. Mm-hmm. That's I'm I'm talking from experience. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I would be too. Yep, completely. There we go. Yeah, I, think I, plug. I think I saw um Allie actually have that take. Um uh Mish, she was saying that the new girl is like a, a mid and he learned his lesson. Uh, Allie's on that crusade right now saying like all the guys need to go settle down with mids. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. Where it's like, um I am a big proponent of women will act as shitty as you let them. Yeah. And a lot of guys are just afraid of her looks. And that's why and no offense to Allie, but it's no surprise that she would say it. I'm just no offense. <laughs> I like her. I like her a lot, but mm. like makes sense. <laughs> I ain't settling down with no mid woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. True. What's considered mid to you could be considered like a 9 or 8 or 10. Yep. To me, wow. you know. like that, That's what I see. Like, I've, I've seen so many people who, who see women who are hot. But yep. to me, I'm like, mm, no, it's not, it's not my thing, dude. Like, mm-hmm. she's, not, she's probably like a 5 or 6 on my scale. Mm-hmm. But, well, yeah, it's, it's like we say, mental point of origin, man. You know? Yeah, I mean yep. the the whole HB scale is nothing but subjective. Rob and I yeah, talked yeah. about that for, oh, yeah. for for days. This is why I like the, maybe the new chick just gives him some crazy stuff in the bedroom. Yeah, could be. Oh, yeah, or so that the new chick like, just eh. listens to him. He points. Well, yeah. Yeah. And one would argue the point too that uh, if his ex girlfriend actually was into him and actually desired him she wouldn't have even needed to have been asked to remove the stuff that he wanted her to remove she would have yeah it's the thing as well yeah, Talking from experience gone out of the way. yeah. i guess um well, well we can uh steel man that the other way like um you know the classic like back and forth that people would say is like oh well mm-hmm. the this is like something that would come out of like Cappy's mouth or something like this it's like um the women just have like zero education these days on how to actually be women yeah. so you know what would you guys say about that yeah, well, yeah, I can see that. Weirdly enough, from my humble experience, is that women just adapt to the most dominant guy in their surroundings. Agreed. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. And yep. when when I hear Cappy scream and yell about women, and when I hear Myron scream and yell about women, I'm like, yeah, of course they act like that towards you because they're not invested in you. As soon as a woman is invested in you, all that narcissistic BBD shit drops. Because mm-hmm. you don't allow it. I just a hate guy with a BBD. strong masculine frame just cuts that shit out. It's yep. like, we don't do that here. And it's done. If she's invested enough, it's done. If she's not invested enough, she's going to give pushback. There's going to be like a frame battle. And then it's up to you. Like, do I tolerate this or not? Like I said, a guy with like strong frame usually is like, I'm, I'm not dealing with this shit. And he leaves. And then it's up to her. Like, all of this is free will. Like, we're not saying you have to force women. No, it's a it's an indicator of interest. Does she want to keep me happy, yay or nay? And like that photo you, sh- you showed of Jonah Hill and his girlfriend wearing the same outfits, definitely her idea. Just mm-hmm. saying, definitely mm-hmm. her idea. Yep. Yeah, guys don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> well... Uh, this guy in the chat, Godspeed Made, actually brings up an interesting point that um uh, uh Chesty made here. Yeah. Um. There we go. Yeah. This is the other point I was talking about too when I said you know it might be a good thing that he had it written out because now it's documented. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I mean, mm-hmm. again, like celebrities are in a totally different world than us, so yeah. you know. Mm. I don't know. Maybe there is something to be said for that, but We're at the same time, YouTube celebrities. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At the same time, though, I highly doubt that that is what was going in his mind. You know, typing that out. That's that's just my thought, but I could be wrong. Well, no, you're you're not wrong. Uh, I mean, maybe he figured it out. Go ahead, Mish. Samuel, I think I don't think Tate said that. I think Ryan said it first. So when he when he mm-hmm. told the story about his sister. Uh, and how she was giving hell to all the men that she was with until one guy who who just told her no. He told her to shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah, shut up. 
Oh, I love that story. Total horse girl giving hell to everybody and just one guy was tired of her shit, like, shut the fuck up, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's the most pleasant thing you'd ever, t- ever see. But, yep. like, they both said it. It's a, it's an, it's an old RP thing, where it's like, mm-hmm. no, a lot of guys let beauty get in the way of common sense. Like, don't step on your own dick. That's it. Women will behave as shitty as you let them. Archwinger. That's where that comes from. Uh, dude, whenever you're in doubt, just rub one out. Honestly, it's, it's like 99% <laughs> of the time. 99% of the time, it's it's not not the big head thinking. It's the small head thinking. Like, if you just rub one out, like, you're going to get that post not clarity. And you're going to mm-hmm. be able to think straight for at least five minutes before you send that text to her. Or like, do yep. that stupid thing. Honestly, it's like so true. Well, unfortunately, yes. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, oh, dude, you don't know is. how many times you know rubbing one out just saved me from doing stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, shutting the fuck. I'm up. I'm not gonna lie, dude. Shutting the fuck up is a superpower, man. It really, it is. is. It is. We're gonna do an entire is. show about unfortunately, that. Unfortunately, I've had to learn that like late in life. Just shutting the hell up. It's uh, even like even with dudes, not just checks. Like whenever you're with new guys, uh, you just sh- shut your mouth. You don't need to be like the alpha male of the group or whatever. Just shut up. Watch the dynamics, you know, so you know how to, you know, just adjust and and choose where you're going to be exactly. Oh, yeah. I laugh like when I uh, go into my shop and some of like the older guys there, I had a conversation once with a guy who recently got divorced and he was talking to me. He's like, have you heard about this guy, Andrew Tate? I'm like, no, never heard of him before. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's it's just funny, you know, when uh, that shit like breaks, you know, like uh, Kind of like the fourth wall break kind of deal, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, dear. Like Andrew, has, Andrew has reached the boomers. Here we go. <laughs> New merch. Yep. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gov. If it's, if it's in black, I'm going to buy it. Every time I hear the phrase post-nut clarity, I think about that shirt, and I think about how, you know, that's that's got to be the uh, official uniform mm. for... You know, our the, the for, for for men as a whole, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, is she worth it? Is the bitch worth it? We yep. don't know. We don't know. Ask me again in like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me about ten minutes. Yeah, give me about ten minutes. But like, the, Mish brings up a fair point, and Hawk has brought this up many times before, where it's like, this is the cool part of the sphere. Mm-hmm. Nobody here has the tendency to amog the other. We can just be ourselves, and it's like, yeah, no, it's just guys hanging out. I mean, like, we accept Hawk for being a raging homosexual. That's okay. And- <laughs> I thought you were gonna call me a raging something else, but you know. I mean, I mean, Mish, like Mish, has to like hold back his tendencies to throw him off a roof, but that's okay, man. I mean, we're multicultural. <laughs> or driving airplanes. You know, I'll, I'll wrestle him. I'll wrestle Mish for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds of people here. Everybody's welcome. I love how, yeah, like you said, not everybody. Diversity is our strength. Yeah, yeah, we got governor from the far south. But like we can't, we can't express here what they do in the far south with me. So, yeah. no, that'd be a terrible idea, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like that too. How nobody's trying to amog each other. I see people trying to do that more in gaming circles than I do in this actual circle of A's, if you will. You know, alphas. Um, really. You know, yes. Oh, yeah. Guys always trying to over talk each other, trying to out alpha each other when they're all betas. You know, funny enough, ironically enough. And I think I've talked about how you put a girl in the group and everybody tries to suddenly be the big man alpha male and try to outdo each other. And yeah, it's fun to watch. Have so. you seen my DDR That's... high school? Exactly. The rhythm game community, up, especially. Holy cow. Uh oh, cameo appearance. Okay. Yeah. Misha, this, we're this goes back to to wine more pleases. Uh, Men with no frame. Post of uh, you know guys without frame. The shit that they say slash do. Absolutely meme? necessary reading. Where's the meme? Mm-hmm. Here it is. I am so proud I made this meme. <laughs> like he he himself loves it. By the way, I was so proud when he said that. He's like, I like it. <laughs> Make me tap the sign. Yep. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But it's so relevant. Every day on Twitter, this post is so fucking relevant. Like, don't make me tap the sign, boys. <laughs> I can start using that way more. Uh we're dunking on people. I yeah. want to have it on red evening. I would love that. Oh, that'd be great. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. What are you gonna I do can't... for two hundred? 
Uh, it's probably gonna be like a round table bar session where it's like, hello kids, open bar. Cool. Have fun, everybody. No women allowed. Damn right. <laughs> Women's She's party. gonna find a way. She's gonna find a way. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> the, the stunt she pulled yesterday was like, god damn it. <laughs> Watch it be, it could be just Tori and then nine other dudes. <laughs> I would, I would not like this scenario in all honesty. No. Do I look like Adam 22? God damn it. <laughs> my god. Oh, I, that, that dude, look. We can oh. make fun of him all we want, but that dude is a marketing genius. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's but true. Is it worth it? He's a marketing genius, but he's a cuck by the end of the day. I'm like, dude, is it worth it? Is dude. it really worth it? Like, dude. You can have like 12 Japanese base set booster boxes, Pokemon booster boxes. <laughs> if you let your wife be railed on camera by another <laughs> man, I do not give a shit. Like, no. No, no. Yep. There's ground rules, man. There's rules to this game, and that is one of them. You don't openly let your wife be screwed on camera by another guy. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't care. Usually, I don't go for the route like a real man, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the camp actually, where it's like, yeah, I'll die on that hill. To yeah. a degree, it looks like a nice hill. That. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, like no soft landings for dudes, I mean like that that really just is something visceral, like in you know in our like hind brains, our lizard brains. You know, it's like mm -hmm. no no dude is really gonna be respecting th this guy. It's kind of like the same thing we're talking about, like all the women talking about our uh, twenty six year old uh, or twenty six year divorced guy. Um, everyone's like cheering him on, but no one's gonna step up to the plate and uh, fuck him. It's the same yeah. thing with like everybody who's stepping up to the plate to cheer on all these like uh, cocks that are running around like Destiny and this Adam Twenty Two guy and everything. It's like, oh yeah, everyone just like cheer him on and everything, saying this is so progressive, this is so sweet, this is so nice and everything. But you know, nobody's gonna be there to pick up the pieces when it all falls to shit. So I mean, Jack Murphy led the way. Jack Murphy, <laughs> Jack he Murphy walked. walked so others could run. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do actually have a theory boys oh uh, so it's it's related to money uh of how much a man is making per month or per year so the equal amount of like 10k dollars a month over here mm. is the point where men start to lose their minds basically and do the most insane shit so i think that's gonna you know translate to probably in the u.s to something around 25k to 30k a month yeah so like because i've noticed this uh and in, in several jobs that i've worked in the guys who were making that amount of money per month mm -hmm. they were the most degenerate not in a good way like they were swingers, they were doing, you know, crazy drugs, uh, doing the most insane shit. It's it's that amount per month. It, there's there's some relation. I do have a theory, but it's still like, you know, not 100% proven. Because, you know, people who make that amount of money, they don't know what to do. Hmm. So what I noticed is like, you know, I've, I've pulled up the data. saw how much me, uh, you know, how much people were making per month. And I know these people, how much they're making. And like the 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 amount was around close to 10k a month. There's something there. So Adam, 22, they're making shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. You know, now look what they're doing. And if you if you notice, like it's it's mostly people who are making a lot of money, they keep doing crazy shit. Yeah. Romanian prison. Especially no. like people who were not used to a lot of money. Like, you know, they mm -hmm. They were just, you know, you know, basically poor or just making by and like, you know, ends meet. Mm -hmm. And they suddenly just, you know, they're making 100K a month or 50K a month of porn movies or whatever. They're just going to not stop. Keep doing. Oh, no, no. Sorry. That was me. I was trying to kill a fly. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's like it goes back to that classic argument about like um, class isn't just a money thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and like people get into like a bunch of like new money and such and start flaunting it about and everything like this. But it's like, um, uh, what the hell is that book? It's like Millionaire Next Door or something yeah, like that. I it's love like that the book. 
the really, really rich guys are the ones that are always like are hiding it and such. And those are like the high class people kind of deal. Oh, and and honestly, like for as much gaff as we uh, like to give Cappy and such, I really, really do love all of his content on minimalism. It, it really love, is. I mean, I yes. love uh, Poor Richard's Retirement. That really is like my favorite book of his. But I like those finance books in general. It's like The Psychology of Money. A Millionaire Next Door, Poor Richard's Retirement, Mr. Money Mustache, The Blog. It's just so Dude. everything is just so simplified. And then you see all these assholes online where it's like, you are the worst examples of financial responsibility ever. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, people. Can we get back to like, can we get back to managing money instead of this garbage? There's um, on the archive, there are, there are a lot of uh financial uh advice posts i don't mm. know all the authors but i do know there's one in the sidebar and there are a couple by by who are they let me look that up real quick poor you richard know, was such a good re recommendation you gave me yeah too. i know oh I yeah yeah i remember that boys. hmm i have a story for you boys like the weekend like I've, I've discovered something about a guy i met around six months ago mm -hmm. uh he's a friend of a friend uh we met in a, like a social gathering the guy looked down to earth he was cool to talk to the guy was you know he was fascinated you know with me with the you know the stories my friend told him about the stories that you know all my conquests and shit so the guy was he, he looked so normal until this Friday, my friend showed me his custom-made car. It's uh, it's bulletproof. Uh, I'll I'll share the picture with you guys later if I if I could find the the, the IG account. Mm -hmm. So basically, he he ordered a Mercedes and had it custom-made. So it's uh, basically a bedroom and bulletproof. Really? Yeah, it is insane. And turns out the guy owns like. Five for six companies and he's like a multi-millionaire damn and not as like not once i felt the guy was you know like his new money and the guy was not that even old he's like he was like one or two years older than me damn oh wow but yeah. it's that scene from breaking bad like everybody here seen breaking bad yeah mm -hmm. no uh, okay no, nah, god damn it well hawk of course not i like i know you like men but breaking bad's a very <laughs> cool heterosexual I keep, series i keep hearing amazing things i just don't watch much tv man but uh carry on i know i know the characters and stuff and okay the theme. so like remember when walter like finally hits it big financially and gus invites him over for dinner and walter is sitting there like oh, what what the hell is this about like am i gonna get killed or whatever and gus just looks at him like you have now made success walter now you must learn to be rich and you see, like, Gus, his car, just some Toyota, whatever. Yep. Meanwhile, he's the biggest drug lord in all of New Mexico. <laughs> like, what the, the hell? Shop. <laughs> yeah, but yep. you don't want to be noticed mm -hmm. is the thing. Exactly. Same with gold oh, yeah. diggers. Like, aren't you afraid of gold diggers? They're only coming if there's gold to dig. Yep. No. Like, I lost everything in a boating accident, Mr. CIA man. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What guns? The CIA man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kidding. Oh, no, man. Kidding. Oof. But I just hear a lot of fear from guys about that where I'm like, dude, have you not learned to like manage your own wealth? You don't flaunt it. Cappy had a post about that, like never show your power level. He's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It I goes remember. back to, to, to oh, learning to shut the fuck up. Yep. You know, oh, yeah. Don't don't flash stuff don't wear designer shit like honestly you could buy a t-shirt from h&m for like i don't know eight dollars oh dang so it will still look good if you you know you know you could get a jeans from like american eagle for like i don't know like 20 bucks or something like 30 bucks and it's still gonna look good if you're like you know not fat mm -hmm. and nobody's gonna know it looks nice on you like you could you could you know ride a normal car and you can enjoy your life and everything without uh, documenting everything on social media and flexing to people online, like who nobody's gonna give a shit about you, anyways. Oh, I mean, right the on. the the H and M slim fit polo is one of the best clothing 
mm, items yeah. you can get. Oh the man, we start talking. We start talking about money, and look who comes in the chat. There she oh, is. Speaking about gold digging, you yeah. heard it. <laughs> There's Kate. Hi, Kate. There's no money here. Hey, Kate. Fine, fine. I'll go put my Versace away. <laughs> but most, like most brand clothing for dudes, is ugly as hell. Anyway, it is, dude. Yeah. I don't know why people pay shit ton of money on that stuff. It's ugly as hell. Yeah, it's like like you got Versace or like Hugo Boss. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, my winter coat is a Hugo Boss for real. Hugo Boss is okay. Yeah, same. I, I have one. It's because it looks based. nice. That's oh, the only nice my, thing. My over, ladies and gentlemen, my overcoat is like that is yeah. peak stylish. So yeah, it's nothing to Hugo, do with 1945. <laughs> from from what I've seen, Hugo cool Boss is at least a higher tier mid clothing line, kind of like say Michael Kors, where you can find something that's as affordable ish, but some stuff in there is still several hundred dollars. My girlfriend loves Michael Kors. So, you know, I, I end up in there, but me Red like flag. In, yeah. Right. I know all chicks um, love Michael Kors, dude, but, even over yeah, here. Exactly. But me, like as much as the owner is kind of cucky, I say Kenneth Cole, those are some comfy clothes and those are not cheap, but not terribly expensive. And they always have a nice way to fit your, you know, body and everything and hug your arms, make you look like really good. So that's a good recommendation too. The only thing I would spend money on are shoes and winter coats. The rest shoes too. Yeah. The rest I really don't give a damn. Yeah. I really don't give a damn. Like mm. if my if my like winter boots ever give out, I found a pair of like Panama Jacks or something. Mm. And they have like sheep wool in them. It's like Ooh, I get yes. wool socks, man. Those are the best. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not a bad thing either. They're super mm -hmm. comfy and very warm. Um, yeah, how cold does it how cold does it get in your winters? Do you get like a shitload of snow or not really? No, 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 not really. Not really. <laughs> like minus 10 was the worst we got this year. Oh, so it's what, like 20 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. Yeah, 15. Yeah, like it's that. nothing. Yeah. Mish, how about Saudi? <laughs> oh, dude. Uh over in the winter, it goes down to like one degrees. One degree, two, three. Yeah, it's yeah. Nothing. I know it's surprising. And even snow isn't up in the north, man. Hmm. The whole desert is just covered in snow. Damn. I would love to see that, actually. It's weird. Oh, dude, I will, I will show you a picture right now. Hold on. I'll... We all got to do a, uh, you know, a post zero on the road. Uh, go and visit Mish. Uh, oh, that would yeah. be fun. If there's one person I would still love to meet, it's Mish. It will happen, yeah, though. Same. It will happen. Yeah. By the way, speaking of which, if you want to be comfortable in your shirts and things like that, I have a spot left for the monthly accountability program where you get a personalized training program, diet plan, weekly form checks, private Discord, and a monthly consultation. Go, please check that out. Governor is a former client of mine. He can vouch. Oh, Jack, check the private chat. and We'll be know, coming back. Yes, it's highly recommended. Choose whatever picture you like. Oh, mm -hmm. damn. Holy fuck. <laughs> what? Snow That's all camels. in Saudi. Damn. I, I hate the snow, but this I would love to see. I don't know what this snow is y'all are talking about. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Texas. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> What's Texas. a snow? <laughs> it's a mythical thing. What? Looks beautiful. That looks cool. Damn. That's weird. But, like, mm -hmm. are these camels or uh, the other ones? Yeah, it's camels. It? Yeah. Those big dromedaries. Yeah, the yeah. dromedaries. Mm hmm. So the Somebody, drama jurors have the two humps. Somebody's been reading my um, uh, Wild Wednesday posts. Yeah. I like those. I love those posts. <laughs> <laughs> I love those posts. Like, it's, mm -hmm. Have you done one on like the biggest hawk in the world? That gray thing? I did one on the uh, Harpy Eagle once, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that thing from hell. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, they're huge. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so soft landings for dudes. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's kind of I, I guess, from the topic, didn't we? <laughs> I guess here's an interesting question though. It's like, even if there was soft landing for dudes, like, would we really want it? You know, it's kind of like how I was um, discussing on uh, Thursday, Conan with um, uh, Robert Kuzland, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're talking about this scene in the movie where Conan has all his wealth and everything like this, and he divulges in every single pleasure and just kind of neuters him as to what he is, and it allows him to be captured by the king's guard. No, it's like if we really had that soft landing, would we really be dudes anymore? You no. Know? Eh, it's like no. is a lion in the cage really a lion? Yeah, good, fair point. I don't think, I don't think we are. But it also depends. Like, where do you want the soft landing? Like, I'll talk to you guys when something comes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't start to emote with 
the females. And they go, oh, life sucks so bad, and blah, blah, blah. No, I tell you guys, like, okay, things are turning to shit right now. I am pissed off beyond belief. Let me vent for a bit, and then we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I, I get this strange sense of a lot of guys just having abandonment issues and trying to fill those or to comfort those issues by their woman. Mm. If that mm. makes sense. Mm. Like we've seen it where we're dealing with the daycare generation. Now, what do yeah. we know about the daycare generation left by the parents way too early uh, not so, getting a good sense, a good development of attachment, developing abandonment issues, and now reflecting that on the people around them. Yeah. Misha, you were saying? Yeah, just a quick thing. Like, I was looking uh, for the correct English translation. Uh, you know, when you were telling the Conan story, um, there's an interesting verse in the Quran that I always relate to. Uh, it says, we have created man into toil and hardship. Uh, I, I always refer to that verse, you know, whenever life gets hard, mm -hmm. it says man. Like mm -hmm. you, you're supposed to be, you know, molded by the hardships and, and, and toil and everything. I'm not the most religious person on earth, you know, but it's still like, it, it resonates so much. But a lot of religions do. A lot of religions got it right. And this is not to like uh, rain on your Islamic parade here. Not to mean that. Please don't start a jihad on me. I don't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Praiseth be the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> but like the ancient religions knew that men are made of hardship. And that comes back to the Atlas quote. Like Atlas did not ask for a lighter load. He asked for yep. stronger shoulders. Mm -hmm. That's where we grow. But like I mentioned, we are now getting into generations of children being left behind, developing all these mental issues, seeking for comfort with the people they shouldn't be looking comfort by, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, Maybe. I mean, it just, it just goes back to, you know, all the things we've talked about many, many a time that, you know, this egalitarianism that we're all, you know, indoctrinated with, especially in the West, but I'm sure it's coming for you soon, uh, Mish, as well. You know, like the the men and the women are exactly the same in all ways, oh, yeah. and we're going to be treated oh, yeah. uh, the exact same and all this nonsense. And it's we're, we're already there, dude. Like, they changed so many laws, and they, they updated basically Islam to, to make men and women equal. They can drive there now, for God's sake. Oh, I mean, like well. driving is is the least of our problems right now. How how much uh, how much did your percentage of accidents increase the second that um uh, law got passed? <laughs> Insurance companies are having a blast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, That's why they did. Like, like, like there, there's 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 Saudi. I got uh, that gov. Twitter accounts that dedicated for dash cam footages. <laughs> 80% of it are just women, just, you know. So so you're saying they're catching up to my Christian churches over here, you know, that are uh, giving the women everything, sounds like. You oh, get there. Like, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but, like, literally women now can divorce men, like, in five, ten minutes. Wow. Mm. They just go through an app on their phone. What? <laughs> Yeah, so you know, like, we have everything digitalized over here. Like a, a, a government, our government is basically digital. Like <laughs> you can access everything through your phone. So a woman can go book an appointment for a court date, and she can attend it online. She doesn't have to be present. Mm. And when the sheik or the judge asks her, like, "Why do you want to be divorced?" She's like, mm, "She can pick and choose whatever reason." <laughs> Dude, from this selection, so you have no, he's not there's like a drop down, down box, <laughs> no full <laughs> point checklist. Uh, like a no like fault he will, he will ask her, like, okay, why do you want to be divorced? She can say, I'm not happy in bed with him. All right, good enough, divorced. I'm not happy with him, divorced. I don't like him anymore, divorced. 
Well, it's just but, like all it's just like all this um crap and the same thing we we're talking about with that um uh, video of our crying dude there earlier. It's like the state, the media, the churches, the government, everyone everywhere can say all they want that uh, men and women are the same, but you know, at the end of the day, we're just not uh, biologically speaking, and you can't override that. And women just simply are not equipped to deal with male problems. They're not. We live in totally right. different worlds. It's like that, uh, what I was referring earlier to, a uh, uh, nuke's banger of a tweet. It's like, yeah, have one date and you're more qualified to talk about how to like pick up chicks than any female dating coach. And that's 100% true. But I yeah. listen to Fresh and Fit and they oh, tell me that I need to at least bang 50 oh, women before any woman in Miami will take me seriously. Oh, my God. I'm, I've never been to Miami, like, but I've seen some videos, dude. Like, that's not a place I want to be in. No, nope. you live in Saudi. How can you want to be anywhere else? <laughs> like, Saudi yeah. looks amazing. Uh, parts of Miami. No, Miami sucks. That the was a compliment, Nish. The traffic alone. The traffic alone in Miami is the reason why no one should ever go there. It, it's. I would it's go terrible. there for a weekend, and yeah, stoning goes. <laughs> 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 <Glenn>. <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> go in Old Testament on him. Yeah. No, but Mish, I'm serious. Like you, you shown photos. I was like, damn, it looks mm -hmm. beautiful there. That Dude. those mountains you showed. Like, yeah, damn. I mean, honestly, like Saudi is a good place if you want to like have a traditional marriage. Okay, so you know, besides the degenerate shit, like I keep doing, there's still some good women over here. I'm gonna be very honest. Still, no, some I good women you. over here. There's a lot of trad people, you know, who <clears throat> just you know. There's a lot of chicks who want to get married you know yeah i mean like you know you're gonna have your percentage of women like if you're gonna pick them up from tinder you're gonna find them you know mm -hmm. uh, but uh yeah are the um, are the trad girls attractive over there mish because the problem you have oh. over here in the states is that the the churches are so feminized that none of them will ever reinforce that the trad chick should actually you know be attractive for men remember so trad the in the west is different than trad in the Middle East because yeah, how so, do they look? You can't see them in the Middle East. No, if you can. Well, I you mean, can. you can see their shape. You know, <laughs> like they're not three hundred pounds, right? <laughs> I mean, like, so, most we don't care about their face. Covered up from head to toe. There's like okay, so there's there's you know there there are the, the the trad type that they cover up from head to toe, and that's just basically scratch and win. And you have the you know the semi trad. Oh, you know, you can see the face, you can see the shape of the body, but you know they're covered up as well. Uh, but still, I mean, like women over here, they take care of themselves. You know, they they go get some, you know, the the hair laser removal, and they they're always clean. You know, even when they get married. I mean, this is not just me. This is like you know, everybody's you know experience. But uh, like like I said, if you if you're going if you're gonna go on Tinder, you're gonna find the hose basically pretty much but that's where yeah. you always find them and in the streets glenn check your uh twitter dms we're gonna oh, roast cool. you can find them on twitter or you find them on uh tinder after they're done with a uh, muslim divorce app it's a muslim okay. like how is that app oh. called <laughs> yeah and the, the funny thing is like there's a lot of women who got divorced yeah uh you know and they just want to have fun and there's a shit ton of them on do oh, they yeah. have a wedding app called moham wed <laughs> no there's like Mohan there's a wed. there's a uh tender version you know like a muslim tender version oh uh fuck, i forgot the name of it like basically you can sign up Tim, and you know um, uh you can sign one. up and you can look for a wife and you know women also sign up there you know they post their pictures it's just for marriage by the way and there's mm. some people who got married off of that app <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Oh. So it's Hinge, a dating app for it's, just it's, it's a legit marriage application. It's a Muslim dating app, you know. Yeah, Hinge is kind like of turning Muslim into that like or something point. or like Muz something. I should It's like Christian Mingle. Like <laughs> yeah. I should have filmed when I was on Hinge. It's like mm -hmm. guys, this is what we're dealing with on Hinge in the Netherlands. It was like fat after fat after fat oh, after yeah. fat. Oh yeah. Wow. Mm -mm. By God, man, like uh, yeah. it's being a fit guy in a fat world is not a fun place to be. It's not a nope. fun place to be. <laughs> the cat agrees. Yeah, A1 agrees. Yeah. yeah. Well, hurry up, Glenn. I'm slow. <laughs> For a guy who's that big, he's pretty slow. I yeah, mean, but I mean, like, he fits you know, the stereotype. Going back to a topic, even over here, like, you know, 
even if a, if a guy who cries on the social media, like, you know, this dude, if, if we have a guy who cries on social media, you're going to see everybody giving him hard time in Arabic. They're going to shit on him, basically, you know, men and women. Based. If he, if he divorces? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, if if the like if we, if we have an Arab dude, like a Muslim or Saudi, mm -hmm. uh, do the same thing like that dude in the car crying, like everybody's gonna shit on him, mm -hmm. men and women. Well, yeah. Well, let's actually talk about like what a like a quote unquote soft landing would actually kind of be like, and what actually would be nice. You know, I did like an impromptu show on um uh, Friday talking about like women and agency, and mm -hmm. one of the things I um you know chatted up on there kind of deal is you know, it's like okay what would you actually expect like uh from a girl even if we wanted to you know but, like we were going over earlier how you know they have like no education as women these days but you know it's like really what would we want just just don't don't cause us more problems be kind yeah. be nice have sex <laughs> you know like the, just the absolute bare bones you know, the, the standards are just so low because all the other chicks are doing nothing in my humble yeah. opinion have something going on a little yeah. appreciation goes a long way, by the way. Like, you know, I, I've noticed a lot of men, they don't get appreciated by their family, friends, you know, uh, work, their wives, girlfriends, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just saying a simple thank you, uh, we appreciate you. Like, you know, just simple words will make men happy. But I think that, you know, you shouldn't be expecting that. I don't know. Maybe that's me just being nihilistic. You, like, you I shouldn't be expecting that from anybody. You don't want a covert contract. But speaking about how to make yeah. men happy, here's a guy who knows everything about that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. You're muted, Glenn. Oh, God damn it. He's just you're muted. Quietly. Glenn, you're muted. <laughs> there you go. We still can't hear you. Can you eat dicks now? <laughs> yeah, we can. We can. We bobble them all day long over here. Yes. Damn it, did that one come out? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> okay, that, that was, was great. Good one. Clip that. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Oh he finally God. got me. <laughs> okay, good one. Damn it. The W. Uh, hello, Glenn. How have you been? I'm good. You know, you guys know I just debated Zerka on the Bible, right? In Catholicism. Uh, Who the oh. fuck is this guy? I keep I mean, hearing I this guy's fucking is. name. Who is he? <laughs> So he is Zerka. I don't know this cokehead Catholic. <laughs> like dead ass Good serious. Combo. Oh, dead ass serious cokehead it's, Catholic. It sounds cool, but it also sounds cringe. It's, yeah. it's pretty funny. <laughs> now, you know we're the nerd part of the sphere, right? We're yeah, we're yeah, the yeah, not yeah. cool like kids. That. Except Chad from Arabia. I mean, like, I mean, think about it. He's like, he looks like a Latin, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just just like a buffer Aladdin, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like he rubbed the genie's lamp and he's like, make me look like this. <laughs> it's like Arabian Aladdin was night. called a street rat and like yeah, and he's like, is called like a drug a, dealer. A I'm gonna sell goats and make my way up to the princess. <laughs> Arabian nights intensifies. Hell yeah. Amazing. Oh man! Hey, Fifty shades for you. Glenn classifies as a nerd. He's drinking out of an R two D two mug. You know it works. Wait, what, dude? Mm. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, dude. We got nerd vibes over here for real. Oh heck yeah! I didn't even see that. That's pretty dope. Yeah. One of us. One of us. I came to the dark side a long time ago. <laughs> In or two? Uh, well, I got swallowed by one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, like, all right, all right, Glenn. What are you gonna tell us about the soft like, landing? Yeah. Why, why do why do why do guys want soft landings? Why? That's a good question. So I have the idea that it mostly comes from abandonment issues and a need to let their love interest become their mother. Oh yes, yeah, I, mm. I agree with that. So mommy syndromes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Your mommy didn't give you the tit when you were younger. You were on Infamil, and then, you know, <laughs> you didn't get that warm comfort of a breast. So I'll tell you this. I'll never say no to a nice pair of tits. So, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying ass men have mommy issues. They never got the tit, and now they don't want it anymore. Keep your eyes open, people. Keep your mm. eyes open. Mm. But you know what's funny is, like, when guys want soft landings or they want things to be easy or equal, I just go, like, why don't you just let your vagina show? Open your legs. <laughs> because think about it. Like, nothing in life that's worth a damn 
comes easy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. why the fuck do you want it easy? Right. The other, you won't the appreciate thing, it if it was easy. The other yeah. thing that's so absurd about it is that uh, your competition is so pathetic these days that it's actually easier than ever. Like the hard work that we had to put in as dudes like a thousand years ago is way more hard work than you have to put in today. It's like the bar is already set so low, and then you want to get a soft landing on top of the bar being set so low. You know, it's well, you, you it's like to... before you used to have to build your house, plant your farm, you know, kill your fucking food, and then go find a bitch to want to live with you. Now, <laughs> all you got to do is make money on crypto, order DoorDash, and rent a Lambo, and then and with a pool, and then you got bitches one. Fuck- it's just like, come on, there's no work in it. Dude, it's not even that, Glenn. Like, honestly, Jack, Red, I think Gov, you also seen some of the shit I've done, like, you know, and then the DMs. If a guy mm-hmm. from Saudi Arabia can be that successful, what's the, your fucking excuse, man? Yeah. Hey, if a guy from the Netherlands who collects shiny cardboard can do it, you can do too. Just say. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Think how bad the think how bad the, the bar is set where Lego nerds like Jack gets laid on the average. Like, <laughs> that, that, that should not happen, okay? Yeah, plus, I'm good looking. I'll driver. give him that. Like, the best excuse they have is like, but he's a good-looking Lego nerd. It's like, yes, but you can be too. Well, not yeah. like me, but you can try. <laughs> Just the work out. So high, Jack. You set the bar so high. <laughs> I know, I know. He's like, he's six foot tall. He's got the abs. He doesn't talk about his income, so we don't know. <laughs> he got the good hair. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but Hawk asked an interesting question. Like, what for you guys is the soft landing? And we'll just go by the panel from left to right. So, Hawk, what to you is the soft landing? Uh, the, the soft landing is just simply as follows is don't make my life more difficult. I mean, I think that's the easiest way to you know sum it all up. It's like uh, Misha was talking earlier about, you know, a little bit of support, a little bit of like, I don't know. You guys know, like uh, the chick will basically go like, you go, honey, you know, you go, sweetheart. Like that's, that's so awesome kind of deal. You know, mm-hmm. a little bit of uh, enforcement is always nice, you know, and obviously, you know, just keep things in a tidy manner, you know, at the house, keep things in order. Just again, like just bare, bare minimum stuff. Uh, a big one for me is just don't bother me when I'm at work. I hate that shit. You know, like if a mm-hmm. chick texts me when I'm at work, I'm like, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, this is a time for me to focus. So, I mean, me working in the trades, I'm like, I need to not have my phone ring when I'm busy with equipment and stuff, like, cause mm-hmm. I can literally fucking hurt myself. So, do not call me at work. Don't give me any of your bullshit. Don't text me. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, later tonight, then we can catch up. But that's yeah. that's just the basic stuff for me. I don't know. I kind of like that. I kind I like the feel of being wanted, but that's me. I just don't pick up. Yeah, I understand that, you know, like uh, you definitely like it when the chick is all over you. But for me, it's like the other issue with me is, um, you know, I, I would just not get work done. You know, like if I if my phone's ringing all the time, you know, I just wouldn't get work done. But is that so. her or your fault? No, oh, it's probably mine, but I don't care. I'll you know, uh, put, it, put it off on her and make things a little bit easier. You know? Oh, we're going to go that way. So, Gov, what to you is like a soft landing? Gosh, I think Red Hawk pretty much said exactly what I was thinking, too, like to the T. Like, I couldn't even describe it any better, to be honest. (laughs) That's the best way to put it. Like, everything at the very beginning, yeah. So I have nothing of uh, extra value to add to that, really. That's uh, shared sentiment, shared uh, opinion. Play DDR with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. That's my soft landing. Yeah, that's some like, hard landing with my Say feet whatever up. you want, but Nuke was right about that. Like, chicks enjoy video games, and when you get a chick who likes playing video games, that is just, like, perfect. Dude, that's – okay, so that's – yeah, if you want to add on something like Glenn that, is here saying, like, who the fuck are these guys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. You're like, what's a video It's game? even more Are fun. we talking Pong? Are we talking Pong? <laughs> what's a Pong? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that, that would actually be a good point, actually – girls that are supportive of your hobbies and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't think that my chick would care that, uh, or I, I thought, you know, she'd see me playing some kind of rhythm game and be like, who is this guy? Why does he do this? Now she watches it and she almost cheerleads me and she's like, Oh, you can do better than that. Or, yeah. So it feels nice. It gives me some nice, uh, motivation, some nice the, stamina. There you go. There are few things as fun as the female neg where it's like, yes. Was, was that your like, best? Was that your like, best? You- Bitch, <laughs> I need to find. I need to find that Mortal Kombat quote. Was that your best? Yeah, that would be a good soundbite. But yeah, 
<laughs> but it's just so funny when women do it. They just stare at you with that like with that look where it's like, really? That's it. It's like, oh, you did challenge it. accepted. You did it. <laughs> it just brings <laughs> out every, the why animal. Do we equate it to every time like they tell us like when they say, "Is that it? Is that yeah is that the best?" It's like, damn, you just told me my dick game sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's and like, it could be anything. That every single time. I'm gonna remember yeah. this for later. I'll get back yeah. to you later. <laughs> I will destroy it. you. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly how it feels. And it can be in anything too. You have a girl just tell you, "Is that your best?" It brings out that animal in you. That goes okay. I'm challenge split you in half later. Right now, yeah. <laughs> like you can be yeah. in the gym and you'd be like repping to failure, and you're like completely exhausted. She'll be next to you. It's like, is that it? Did you die? It's like it's like that meme of the guy that's lifting, and he says, "If I don't lift this one more time, or if I don't do one more set, then I'm gay and my family will die, or something like <laughs> yeah. that." I tell myself that every day when I go to the gym. I'm like, "I'll be just as yeah. weak as Jack. If I Same. don't get this last rep, I'll be just as weak as Jack." Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like gonna lie. I've been slacking off. So I was. I used to be able to like uh, rep 315 on deadlift for like five six. Mind you, I am a buck 65. I was gonna so, say you're smaller than me. Like yeah. we're the same height, but you're way smaller than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and so I went to Portugal. Kind of went like oh, I'll just post. I'll just focus on the aesthetics, things like that. So didn't rep heavy. And my former training partner was like, come on, we're going to deadlift together. And I was like, oh, I can still do 315 for five or six reps. We <laughs> got we got a 225. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, did, did you feel your butt cheeks start quivering? You're like, man, oh, I'm about to no. shit my pants here. Like, we got to two. Uh, let's see. What is that? 120 <laughs> kilos is 265. And I only got that for one. I'm like, oh, my Jeez. God. I'm like, no, man, this is that. No, I will not. I will not stand for this. So I've been working on my deadlift again and it's going well. 165, no, 155 for six. So we're getting there. We're getting back at it. Getting back what at it. What are your thoughts about, like, you know, doing deadlifts? See, I can't do deadlifts just for reps now because my heaviest deadlift was 700. But yeah. like, I noticed, like, for, it makes my hips boxy. So when you're kind of get that V taper, right? And then you get to the obliques, they, get, they look square. So hmm. I try to stay away from deadlifts now. I do like, you know, back extensions and stuff. Be yeah. Just because I try to like keep that X look. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. man, I used to love deadlifts. D depends on how you do them. Like if you do the stiff-legged Romanian deadlifts and just for reps, then I would say, yeah, you're going you're gonna to focus more on the hypertrophy side of it. That mm -hmm. indeed you're gonna get that squarish hip, but when you do it just pure for strength, so to the floor, you're really gonna train your core better, get better ab definition, just stronger overall back, core, glutes, you name it. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I would still advise deadlift. That's how I do it now. It's just one set, max reps, done. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can I can fuck with that. I can fuck yeah, with that. Yeah, it's like it's just a pure strength thing. That's the only reason I still do deadlifts like that. One yeah. time a week, pure strength focus, and then moving on. Yeah, yeah. I would say my soft landing. Go ahead. All right. Are a nice pair of titties to put my head. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> yes, a nice agree. butt. You know, like you don't want no hard butt, especially when you hit it from the back. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, like having sex with a, a wall. It just doesn't feel good. No. I don't know. I never no. had sex with a wall. Please tell us, Glenn. How is okay, that? So <laughs> let me tell you about this one time in band camp. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say like you know what, uh, soft landing, and I'm not. I'm sure you're sure Chad does not have this in his Quran, but <laughs> in the Bible, <laughs> the better version, the better version, the original one. <laughs> <laughs> it says, you know, in Ephesians, you know. Wives, submit to your husbands as your husbands as you to the Lord. For yep. the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, which is the Savior. So now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives submit to your husbands in everything. Not in some things, not in the things that you like, not in when he makes you feel good, not when you want to. It says yep. in everything. So I think, like, for me, the soft landing is knowing that, like, my wife knows that I lead this house and that she trusts me to lead this house and I have proven myself worthy to leave this house. So when I make a move, she's like, 
She may be questioning it, but she doesn't challenge it. I like it. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the soft landing because you can't have, you know, a mutiny. Hmm. House divided cannot stand. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so I that's think that's perfect. a soft landing for me, and I think that's very rare where, wherever you are in the world. You know, you know, yeah. as soon as they gave women the rights to drive in in, in Arabia, I already knew things were going bad. In Saudi <laughs> Arabia, that, that was it. That was the that was the that was the, that was the end times. That's when that the was the coming back. The camel's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's revelations Literally. right there. <laughs> it's like, but th- th- what I mean by that is that you know, and I, it says in, it says in, in Genesis that you know her desire to rule her husband, but he will rule over her. And it's just like, well, it just tells you that's feminism. And that's the house divided. So I think the soft landing for me is when you find a woman that is in your frame, that literally submits to your frame, that's the soft landing. No, yeah. Pretty much. The, the only thing I would add to that is don't expect that. Never expect it. Yeah. Earn it. You earn it, it every single given. time. Yep. Captain flight attendant. Yep. Yep. If she wants to that, give it just to the, the shit that you did yesterday, that ain't that don't mean shit today. Oh yeah. That don't mean shit today. That's the beauty about nihilism when you start living like that, where it's like, ah, just take it day by day. Works perfectly in a it feminine really narrative. Does. It's like, yeah, don't you remember yesterday? Nope. Could die today. Just focus on today. It's like, it works perfectly in a relationship. Like he understands me so well. Meanwhile, crippling depression. <laughs> <laughs> it works but perfectly. It's like, okay, here's a movie quote. You ever see the movie Notebook? I know it's a big chick flick. I've never like, seen it. In the end, like his like lady has like Alzheimer's and she doesn't remember shit. So every day he's reminding her their story, right? And like, and then every day she like falls in love with them. It's kind of like almost like that in a way. It's like every day, if you're not on your t- on your game, you're giving your woman a reason not to be in love with you anymore. Yeah, and not I saying totally you're doing it that. to keep her in love with you, but if you if you invested in her and you want to, you know, keep the the things going well, then you have to do what you were doing yesterday, today, and more. So whatever, mm-hmm. like guys think like like we get to lay off the gas. We don't ever get to lay off the gas. There's no timeouts for us. There's no days off. You're yeah, always putting in the work. A lot of guys don't understand this, and, uh, this either, like with soft boundary setting. So, uh, good example. Yeah, it's the only example I can use. Apology. Well, no, I'm not really sorry about it. But <laughs> so when I do shows with Tori, she has a reactionary response of saying F you. Now, I know she doesn't mean it, but it's like it's a verbal thing where it's a reaction. But I do take note of it where it's like, you don't say that to me. But the beauty thing is she like immediately recognizes it and is like, oh, yeah, no, I shouldn't say that. Now, you might think like, oh, but she doesn't mean it. Why do you make a point of it? Start early. Yeah. Just start early. Because a lot of guys are like, oh, she doesn't mean it. Oh, it's not that bad, whatever. Like, okay, you don't find it that bad, but you do have to set the boundary somewhere. Mm -hmm. It starts somewhere. Oh, yeah. A lot of guys don't do that. They just let everything slide. No, if you don't put, like, boundaries... And that's part of frame, right? If you do not put your boundaries in place in the beginning of your relationship, then you don't have any direction for your relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You'd a like lot of guys, a lot of guys make them a, know where to go. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of guys make the mistake like they let things, you know, build up. Like, uh, how many rocks does it take to make a mountain? And lo and behold, you have like a fucking mountain of issues in your relationship. And then you try and fix it and start instituting like boundaries and TRP tactics. It's like, dude, you're in for a world of hurt. Um, yeah, it's, it's the Jonah thing. He should have Which- like those boundaries he set. That should have happened naturally before they even got into a relationship. Exactly. That's what exactly. I was saying. That was my take on it. It's like the medium yeah. is the message. It's like the fact that this needed to be said at this point in the relationship says way more about the guy than it does about the girl. Yeah, and you mm-hmm. can't blame the girl at that point. Nope. No. You, you can't blame the women for basically Paul. anything they, they do. Let, and and yeah. guys do this shit all the time where it's like they let shit add up, add up, build up, and then they want to fucking explode on her. Right? Yeah. And they don't say anything before. Yeah. 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 You did this. You did, and it's like, well, why didn't you tell her that shit then? Yeah. Ex- oh my god. Dude. This mm-hmm. is, okay. So, this is a good point, by the way. Still waters. Yeah. yeah. You should, 
I can but go ahead, Mish. This happened to me a while back, you know, before the RP and everything. I, you know, I've, I've let a chick just do her thing, go to parties, have fun and everything. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. That's cool. I'm trying to be, you know, open minded and all of that shit. Oh, like Destiny. But it's not cool. Yeah. And I said, hey, this shit is bothering me. She's like, why didn't you say anything in the beginning? You, you can't blame her. No. No. I mean, it's a hard thing to realize. But yeah, if you don't want her to pull shit, you say that from the beginning and you, and this is where I have the sense, well, I know like the blue pill guys have an issue with it. Like she's her own human being. Yeah, but so are you. What do you yeah. want? How do you want your relationship to look like? This is about your relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like she has a free will in to make the choice to make you happy or not. Mm -hmm. But a lot of guys forget that because they're just not their own mental point of origin. Well, see, oh, yeah. nope. That's a victim of gynocracy. It's, it's a very blue-pilled, like, churchy belief, right? You know, yeah. if you're a good servant leader and you just serve her, you know, hopefully she'll come around and see, you oh, know, no, your way won't. of things. And, you know, she'll just, like, start wanting to uh, do these things that you're not telling her you want her to do naturally. Because for some reason, women are psychic, right? And they'll just be able to read your <laughs> goddamn mind. And, and and then, you know, she'll stop dressing like a slut on her own without you telling her to stop dressing like a slut. No. You well, guys, her. well, and Glenn, you'll know a lot about this coming from a Christian background. Like, guys are just fed the stuff like, oh, if I'm the good, strong plow horse, then that means the woman is going to be the good, strong, submissive wife because that's what it says in the Bible. But oh. newsflash, guys, like, women do not have the same respect and concepts of honor that men do. They literally do not process these things in the exact same way as men mm -hmm. do. So like saying that like, oh, the good book says this. It's like the girl doesn't give a shit about that. The girl gives a shit about what's directly in front of her. And you could say, oh, uh, that's sexist and that's mean or whatever. But it's just the fucking facts. So adapt. Well, they're a right? good plow horse out in the field, but they ain't plowing that whore. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, wrong. you know. It doesn't help either that, you know, you got churches these days that try to teach and it plow this into our heads, too. I haven't been to a single I've been to many churches in my lifetime, and a lot of them have that same message of, oh, yeah, you've got to be the one uh, uh, to be the submissive one. You've got to, uh, you know, you got to work and you've also got to slave away, basically. And it's it's it gives men the wrong way to think. And then of course, you know, that's how we end up with so many of the trads that we do these days too. The track. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, we have it's the like same a normal thing, over thing. Here as well. you know, yeah. you're, you're going to, you're going to do it for the honor. You're not doing it for her. You're doing it just to do it because that's your duty. You know it's what? My duty, yeah. is? my duty is to conquer the world. And if this thing is not helping me conquer the world, she could be left behind. All yep. right. It's yeah. just that easy. Mish. What's your definition of a soft landing? Oh, dude, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's several things because, like, you know, I have several women. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I know this is going to sound, you know, super cliche like our friend Pat Stedman, but, you know, you know that feminine Patty energy? Patty cake, bird, doo, yeah, doo, 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 you know, doo, doo, doo. they yeah. smell nice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. Like whenever I come home, there's somebody to, you know, just to give me a hug, uh, say, you know, God bless you for, you know, going out to work, I find a hot meal, you know, throughout the day, I'm just pampered. I don't know, dude. It's I'm, I'm going to sound like Pat Stedman now. No, but I get what you mean. Like, you're saying, yeah. It's like, yeah, like yeah, when yeah. a guy is sick, you don't want to be involved with your buddies. Like, leave me the fuck alone, yeah. but you want your wife there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. you don't want her to pamper her, to pamper you, because I, at least I get sick of that shit. But you do want her there. Like, just be yeah. here. Yeah, just just support you know and yeah. you know it's interesting how none of us said we want our woman there for us to cry in front of her you know not a single oh. one of us said that shit no. you know so uh, oh dude when i'm crying i'm gonna do it alone dude nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be there to see me cry no, i'm just gonna be like pet stepman and do it online where nobody can see it <laughs> 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 so guys let's wrap this one up hawk what have you got coming up um, I've just got, uh, the same shit, same day. Um, check out, uh, the Twitter, check out the Substack. I might actually do a post, um, today uh, after I finish this. Um, so check that out and then check out my company, the little glory club. If you guys are looking into uh, American right-wing news and American history. So check that stuff out as well. And then check out my own channel. Good. Governor. 
Um, I've just uh, got another video lined up. I've been tended to have it come out uh, the past couple weeks, but I've been busy with my life, so it'll come whenever it'll come. But you can find me on, uh, as it says down there, at Governor Megatron on YouTube and at GOV underscore Megatron on Twitter. And uh, I'll see y'all there. Nice. Glenn? Oh, man. So I am, me and Zerka are releasing this debate that we had. Um, you see it slowly leaking on uh, on Twitter, so keep an eye out on that. I think he's dropping it today. Um, mm. it's, a, it's a good one. Two hours, or almost three hours of me dealing with a cokehead Catholic. It was pretty. It was pretty <laughs> entertaining. Um, and we call, we make fun of Sneeko. We make fun of the Tates. We make we make fun of a lot of people in this video. Like it is it. It'll get us canceled. <laughs> if you guys don't see wait. me, um, it's because I got trafficked to Romania and I'm oh. sold. <laughs> But no, um, we got that. Uh, I'm going to be working with Rolo today on his stream uh, nice. at 1 o'clock. So cool. keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, uh, just editing the Kiyosaki interview that we did out here. So oh, nice. And nice. planning Rule Zero meetup in Vegas with Jack. Oh, oh damn. Nice. Yeah, I'm cool. aiming for February. That's a good time because that's when we're planning on doing it. So. Oh, good. Yeah, I was planning I'll, I'll on February. Oh, right I'll come. I'll come out there for sure. I, Vegas is a great time. In February. I need to get it's my green card, time. boys. I need to get. Hey, my green hey, card. Is, is Tori still single? <laughs> You've not been paying attention, have you? <laughs> I have. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> he has not been paying. He has not been paying attention. <laughs> I've heard rumors, so I'm just saying <laughs> the rumors can be confirmed. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so when's the date? Can we do it? Hey, let's do it in Vegas. <laughs> do <it live. laughs> we'll do it live. Fuck it. <laughs> we got a chapel over here. 24 hours. Just roll right up. <laughs> Mish, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, but I haven't been active lately. I've been busy with real life, trying to do some crazy corporate espionage shit. I might be on the news. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> you have, you, you've been peaceful. You haven't chosen violence. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've he busy. hasn't. He's been restraining yeah, I'll, himself. I'll, I'll tell you offline what I've been doing. Okay. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below your thoughts of this show. And if you need some help with getting your fitness life in order. Uh, if you're a beginner, go with me. If you're more an advanced lifter and you want to like bring that to the next level, like competition, go to Glenn. He can tell you a lot more about that than I can. But if you want to start out and you don't know where to begin, go with me. That's it from us. Cheers. Bye. Later. Totsi.